Kumar Shivashish. Good evening, sir. Good, good evening, evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Now, you are from Jharkhand. Yes, sir. And you opted for mathematics as your optional. Yes, sir. And you are already in IPS right now. Yes, sir. I'm currently undergoing training at the National Police Academy. Okay. Have they allotted you your cadre or not yet? Yes, sir. I was from the 2020 batch, so I've been allotted my home cadre of Jharkhand. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, tell us uh, what is India's contribution to the mathematics. Sir, uh, right since ancient times, Indian mathematicians like Aryabhatta, who gave the concept of zero, Bhaskaracharya, who gave the concept of a positive number and a negative number, the circumference of the earth, these mathematicians, be it Pingala and other main multiple mathematicians, have contributed to the foundations of mathematics on which the world built. Of late, uh, we have uh, individuals, we had individuals like Sri Ramanujan, who worked brilliantly in the Royal Mathematics Society, gave the concept of a Ramanuja Hardy number and other Riemann sums. And sir, of recently, unfortunately, due to some problems in India, we have Indian origin mathematicians like Manjul Bhargav and Akshay Venkatesh who have won the Fields Medal uh, of Canada. So sir, throughout history and including in the present, Indians have had a commendable impact in mathematics. Very good, very good. Have you read Arya Bhatia? No, sir, I've not read the book. Surya Siddhant? No, sir. I have not read the ancient mathematics books. Okay. No problem. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, since you are in the police service already, yes, sir. I would like to ask you, you know, the general public is somewhat scared of visiting any police station. Even if there is a need, they feel quite scared. Yes, sir. There is a distrust between the two, police yes, and the sir. public. Yes, so sir. how do we bridge this distrust? How will how should we reduce this or make it, you know, citizen friendly? Yes, sir. Precisely, there is a general distrust, as is seen by only five percent of sexual assault victims in India reporting the matters to the police. Sir, the first thing that has to be done is community policing in India, which ensures that there is a stronger tie between community and police in India. Uh, which can be done through weekly meetings, which can be done by ass allotting beat constables to every family so that they become part of the members of the family and then they can work together towards solutions. Sir, mm -hmm. secondly, the Indian police service in particular has to let go of the unfortunate elitism that has crept in and realize that it is a service and not a privilege. And sir, finally, it has to be through the use of technology by ensuring that uh, complaints and petitions can be filed online, FIRs can be tracked online. This will make the police more accessible to the people, thus bridging the trust gap. Sir. Related to this is the you know politicization of police. Uh, we have seen many incidents where police has been used primarily in a case which is you know politically motivated. So the instances of such cases have increased in the recent past. So what do you think about that? Yes, sir. That is an unfortunate truth that indeed there is a politicization of the police in particular and the civil services in general, sir. Sir, however, I feel if we can stick to the in-spirit implementation of the Prakash Singh judgment, we ensured that the police hierarchy itself uh, uh, dealt with the postings, promotions, transfers in the police uh, system, sir, so that will ensure that the politicization will reduce and the, the independent force that was meant to be the police can flourish and thrive as a tool to serve the public, sir. Okay. My next question is on transnational crimes. What are the laws which govern transnational criminals? Sir, First of all, uh, we have the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act that was uh, allotted recently in which any uh, financial uh, criminal who, who leaves the nation can be brought back and can be tried in India. Sir, secondly, we have the Prevention of Money Laundering Act that is enforced by the Enforcement Directorate, which also has uh, transnational uh, salient features in it. And sir, finally, the National Investigative Agency also has its jurisdiction outside the border through which it can apprehend and uh, prosecute yeah, criminals. The biggest problem is that bringing back those criminals yes, sir. who have somehow parked themselves outside the country. Yes, sir. 
sir uh, for that we need to work on more extradition treaties uh, with uh, with other countries we need to ratify the anti torture uh, sir the convention that is there so that countries are more comfortable in extraditing indian citizens to face the uh, justice of the law in india itself and sir sir these uh, processes can ensure that the, this uh, this can be done better sir do you think the interpol can be made more effective sir the interpol can become more effective in coordinating with national governments because uh, removing the sovereignty of the government in uh, national issues can be a problem however the coordination aspect can definitely improve sir okay my last question is that you know how do we make india economically more strong or more powerful what are your suggestions that can transform the country's economy into a next you know higher level economic powerful nation sir this needs to be done by a, a multi pronged approach sir firstly we have to ensure that uh, we increase our expenditure on the capital front because the returns on the capital front are rupees 2.5 for every rupee spent on capital expenditure whereas that on the revenue front is 50 paise per every rupee spent sir secondly we have to provide a good social security net to individuals via a quasi universal basic income because demand definitely drives our economy and sir finally we have to ensure that exports grow and there is indeed an atmanirbharta in india which is currently unfortunately not the case as been seen by the high current account deficit that is existing in india sir and what about technological innovations yes sir to have a very good capital expenditure output ratio and to have good exports in india we definitely need technology sir very right sir okay thank you thank you dagur sir you are uh, undergoing training at uh, national academy yes sir for how long you have been there sir i have started training from 26 march although the first two weeks were mostly orientation for training sir who have a hobby of uh, see watching the movies on wars yes sir so how many actually movies you have watched so far sir i i have watched multiple documentaries while while i was in college of late this has reduced a bit due to the hectic schedule that is there but sir if i had to pick a number it would be more than sir 15 or 20 at least any of any, late. Book, any book on that any book you have read sir books yes. i stick more to economics democracy and other aspects sir documentaries is something i enjoy about war sir so then you must be aware what are the impact of a war sir being a very anti war person i feel that war mm -hmm. has mostly if not all negative impacts it shatters the economy of a country of mm -hmm. both the countries of all the countries that are involved tell it in shatters the social economy is one you tell in the yes, bullet sir. points here yeah. yes sir sir social fabric of the entire country is demolished due to the demographic changes that occur sir thirdly we have a sense sir, of distrust in the slightly government. social fabric is slightly see vague i mean be specific yes sir sir the social ties that exist within bordering areas that are generally decent sir for instance just to take an example sir the eastern part of ukraine had decent relationships with russia which has now been really tarnished in addition sir, to strategic and geographical things come towards the society the impact on the society yes sir sir the death and destruction that occur of civilians that is the first and primary impact sir secondly health education these things are impact affected which have the <laughs> worst impact on children and the future generations which is one of the most prominent and long lasting effect of any war and sir thirdly war reduces the chance of a good build back better strategy which has uh, implications okay, in let us move to the other question your father is chief inspector factories yes sir retired chief inspector of factories can you tell us what is the difference between a chief inspector of factories and chief inspector of labor sir in jharkhand chief inspector of factories worked under the labor department mm -hmm. itself my father dealt with uh, the <coughs> sir the chief inspector of factory factory primary deals with the implementation of laws like the factory act 
maternity benefit act and other such acts uh, just one minute factories chief yes, inspector of factories he looks after maternity benefits yes sir the maternity benefit act was also covered by him in jharkhand and what are the things he is supposed to see sir the implementation of the factory act the implementation of the minimum wages mm -hmm. act the implementation of the bonus act maternity <clears throat> benefit act and ensuring that industries are in compliance with all the regulations of the jharkhand government that are in place sir and now come to labor inspector sir although i am not sure of such a position existing in jharkhand but sir the other aspects that were left were yeah, labor inspectors in labor inspectors are everywhere i don't think matlab any state is exempted actually from that yes sir the deputy labor commissioner post that exists in jharkhand sir they dealt with deputy labor commissioner is a uh, he sits in the headquarter where the hod is yes, sitting there the labor commissioner deputy labor commissioner's job is to assist the commissioner the hod and yes sir in matters of labor and below them there are the labor inspectors so now tell sir, us not what aware are of the sir. functions of Sir, see, some of the functions you have already enumerated while giving the yes, functions sir. of the uh, factory inspector. Okay, you okay, study. I'll, I'll read upon it, sir. Thank study you. Sir. Now, tell us actually who can file FIR? Sir, uh, any citizen can go to the police station and if it is any a cognizant. Citizen. Yes, sir. Can go and get, a, a, get an FIR. Number, FIR. number one is any citizen can file an FIR. Then, number two, Sir, they have to go to the police station. No, no, no. And I'm just asking who else can file an FIR. So this is one one category: citizens. Then, sir, even foreign nationals can file FIR if the yeah. event of yeah. crime is existing in India. Yeah. Then who else? Sir, that is that that basically covers every possible entity that can have a complaint, sir. So no, no, there is there is very important entity is still there. Sir, I'm not aware, sir. You are there, police officer. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. The yes, sir. Exactly. I I felt it was covered in the city. Yes, sir. Police officers can also sue a motor. Take yes, a what happens to the FIR after an FIR is filed? What happens to the FIR, sir? After the FIR is filed, the inquiry office of the police station goes to ascertain the facts that are there. Inquiry, and, sir. Are you sure it is an inquiry officer? Yes, sir. An investigation is sir. An inquiry office is there, which conducts an investigation. Mm -hmm. And after that, once the facts have been ascertained, sir, it uh, after that uh, the after asserting all the facts, the police either files a charge sheet or it files a final report. And after that, the matter goes to trial, sir. This FIR is mentioned in which act or which law, sir? Section one fifty four of the Criminal Procedure Code mentions it, sir. Achha. But there is some important aspect of FIR which is still missing. Sir, uh, Section 154.3 mentions that if mm -hmm. the FIR is not registered by the police, then the citizen has a grievance uh, mm -hmm. to the superintendent that, of police. <clears throat> that is that is the alternate mechanism. I'm not asking of that. that. I'm asking actually what happens to the FIR before, Sir, tax, it, before charge sheet. Sir, the investigation occurs before charge sheet. If it is a non investigation is okay. Investigation is okay. Yes, sir. Sir, in the investigation process, sir, the evidence and witnesses are uh, sir, testified, and then any sir, charge sheet. Any reference to magistrate? Yes, sir. In case it is a non cognizable offence, the matter is referred to a magistrate rather than the police filing an FIR. Sir. Matter or copy of the FIR is to be sent. Yes, to sir. Co six copies of the FIR are there. First of which is sent to the magistrate. Other copies are also kept, and one is one copy is given to the petitioner himself. Now, tell us actually how you will improve the investigation as in police officer, sir. First of all, I will ensure that, uh, sir, the, my staff is trained in such a way that they can leverage technology. Sir, secondly, utilizing the resources that are obviously already there with us, like the CCTNS, which is not very widely used in multiple states, particularly my home state of Jharkhand, that will be used to ensure transparency and accountability and the people it's themselves can track what the stage of the investigation when is. You, when you say technology means what tools? Yes, sir. 
sir these tools can be cyber tools sir for instance cyber cyber is a great asset to the police which is not very properly utilized due to failure okay, in implementation one, yeah. of this yes sir then what else sir secondly is forensics which is again a very useful tool but is <laughs> still very mildly used only states like andhra pradesh and some other yeah, states that, are that's using okay. it well. yeah that's okay the next yes sir sir thirdly cctns should be used to improve the interface no, of the yes, people the, then yes sir sir and fourthly sir i will definitely ensure that the investigation that is done is timely in nature because as time passes sir the investigation is something which is very important in the modern days which can be used actually in the investigation and many uh, investigating officer i use use it rather matlab majority of them use it sir proper inter proper interrogation techniques and call data records is actually information available in social media social media profiling yes sir okay yes, thank sir. you thank you sir hello shivashish i see that uh, 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 good evening i see that you already been selected for the ips and you are under training at spp npa yes sir uh, in your hobbies i see that you like apart from watching documentaries on war you also are a uh, avid follower of football yes sir okay, which uh, what kind of football do you watch do you sir i used to watch a lot of uh, la liga because my favorite team was barcelona until messi left uh, barcelona lionel messi left barcelona sir mm -hmm. currently i watch selected matches of the english premier league sir english premier league so did you happen to watch this last night west ham versus man city sir i watched the highlights sir yeah, i watched sir, the highlights it was a 2-2 oh. draw yes, okay so what do you say how how's the title hanging in balance what is expected to happen sir uh, being a follower of the tiki taka philosophy sir i want manchester city to win although it is a very close title race but mm -hmm. i feel in current situations manchester city tends to pull off in league stages and sir i i hope and i feel that they will come off with the title sir okay so uh, as you've been following tiki taka uh, uh, earlier you were a follower of barcelona now you are also a follower of manchester city what is the common Den, common, uh, common denominator between the two sir the coach uh, pep guardiola who is currently coaching mm -hmm. manchester city was in its prime the coach of barcelona sir and also yeah. player of barcelona so, so yes. you mean he is not in his prime anymore now sir in barcelona's prime sir he is okay, he is an evergreen now. coach sir yes sir okay so there has been a criticism that uh, he is uh, more of a checkbook coach because wherever he has been so they have always prized up on the uh, most expensive players and made a team with that i do you agree with that sir uh, he is a high maintenance coach definitely but sir the quality of football that he produces and the number of titles that he wins i feel that that justifies the price tag that he comes with sir. no he comes with certain i am not talking i am talking about the players that he buy because yes sir exactly he he is always at the most expensive squad while he was in the uh, in barcelona he had the most expensive squad while he was in bayern he had the most expensive squad and similarly here so wherever he's been he's always had the most expensive squad so do you yes, think sir. that this kind of the spending uh, collecting all the most expensive players on one side does it tilt balance for the other teams Yes, sir. By mistake, I mentioned price tag. I meant the operational expenses he comes up with, sir. Uh, to be more accurate, and sir, it does tilt the balance in favor of particular teams. But sir, the quality of football that he produces, and the fact that there are still teams that compete with him very closely, be it in Barcelona when Real Madrid under Jose Mourinho gave him a very close fight, be it mm -hmm. Liverpool currently in the which Jurgen Klopp is giving a very close fight. Sir, the mm -hmm. quality of football is ensured despite the heavy capital expenditure that he incurs for a team. So, so he is value for the money. Definitely, sir. In my humble opinion, yes. Sir. So, uh, what is uh, the status of Indian football now? Do you follow like any of the clubs here, or do you follow any of the leagues here? Sir, uh, two years ago, I used to follow some of uh, the Indian soccer league (ISL) because FC Jamshedpur was a part of the league. But, sir, off late, I have not been able to due to the paucity of time, sir. Uh, just yesterday only, there was a news in the papers that one of the clubs it has. Managed to retain the I League title. Do you know which club? Sir, no, sir, I do not. Know. Heard of Gokulam Kerala? Sir, Kerala team. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, I do Kerala not know the name of the team. Okay, okay right. sir. Thank you, sir. What is the What is the difference between the ISL and I League? Uh, 
how are the two connected sir the isl is a later invention the i league was the original football league of india the isl indian soccer league was recently uh, paired up with 10 teams who were playing in a league format mm-hmm. sir there was a sir there was some controversy regarding the india's representation in the asian champions uh, in mm-hmm. which of in which of these leagues would be there and sir the i league has sir regal leagues regal teams like uh, atletico de kolkata and mohan bagan fc while i league has 10 solid new teams in which the investments are higher which is increasing the popularity of football in india sir so uh, earlier in the bcci case the uh, supreme court ke came up with certain directions to the uh, all these uh, associations that are running the game so do you re- think Uh, given this uh, conflict of interest between the owners and the people who are running these leagues that the government should step in and take over the administration of these uh, associations that are running the games sir in case of football although soft touch regulation is definitely needed but sir i also feel that football in india is still in a blossoming stage in which overt regulation will only nip it in the bud which is not uh, in favor of the country and its youth in general so sir i feel yes sir soft touch regulation to prevent any conflict of interest and to ensure a fair game and a fair league in general is is necessary however it should be as minimal as possible sir right you since you already joined the police services what role do services police and defense services have in creating a better sporting atmosphere in the country can you cite some examples sir first of all police and defense uh, services ensure that there is security and without security sports which most people in india look at as a leisure activity would be a, a, a pipe dream sir first is that sir secondly police organizations and defense organizations have a very solid culture of sports and they produce very good teams we, as has as i have currently witnessing in the national police academy itself which leads to the improvement of culture in india and sir thirdly police and defense provide a good incentive for sports persons in general as well be it uh, the recent uh, medal winners uh, of the olympics or be it cricketers who who used to play in their t20 world cup who are now in police uh, in the police service sir these are good incentives no, for people no, i i really persons. mean to ask how it actually started how do how did the police and defense services became this nursery for the talent i'm asking more in that fold sir although i'm not aware of specific examples but i feel the focus on fitness the colonial legacy that was there in which the britishers interfered a lot and they developed that culture sir i think these things definitely made them I a believe, good nursery i believe the appropriate answer would be lack of infrastructure in the civil domain so uh, guys from rural background who happen to join the services they can nurture their talent there and that is how they, all the earliest of the sports persons whether it was milka singh bhim singh or the boxers mehtab singh everyone so these sir, people actually yeah, right yes sir so yes, the last you, question i'll ask you is what is uh, military establishment sir sir i'm not sure can i take a guess just based on the word or yeah yeah please sir the military military establishment comes from the conjoining of word military establishment and it refers to the systems of hierarchies and the system of organization that is present in the military in military complex uh, I, i was thinking since you are watching documentaries on war so you'll have a little bit more of the idea and so military Shall plus establishment it? complex so okay, most sir. prevalent in uh, like in the case of us also sir in, in the Pakistan defense also. industry in us yes sir right yes, sir. right oh, no, that's all thank you thank you sir so chivashish i find that uh, you are fond of watching uh, documentary on wars yes sir okay have you seen bridge on river kawai no sir no bridge too far no sir battle of the bulge no sir wild geese no sir i have not watched these documentaries have you seen uh, bbc's uh, documentary on second world war sir the second world war in color on netflix is something that i had seen some time ago yes sir okay so that uh, documentary talks about one of the episode a very major one <coughs> is dedicated to the forgotten army 
sir i What? do not recall very accurately but sir i think it was referred to the sir the continental army and the army of india that had played a very major role in the world war sir okay sir all right so what is the motivation behind uh, watching these war movies what motivates you to sir uh, in general i am a very anti war person and i have never been able to understand why wars have occurred and are still occurring on a very regular basis so sir my main motivation behind watching war documentaries is seeing the causes of that and the impact that it has and sir up till now i feel there are there have been very few wars that there has been actually a just justification for so sir that is the motivation to understand why war occurs because in general i am a very anti war person sir oh, that's a very interesting point you have brought up do you think the bangladesh liberation war was a meaningless purposeless war sir india's role in the bangladesh liberation war was definitely an answer that that was warranted uh, sir it had at it had its causes in the bangladesh immigrant crisis that was crossed the operation chengiz khan that was launched by pakistan on our air bases and thus we had to answer it sir and the pakistan and the bangladesh liberation war was a very warranted war sir okay and uh, 1965 or for that matter 1962 if you are aggressed upon should you not respond does it make the war unnecessary yes sir precisely the aggression is the part that i feel is very unnecessary be it 1962 1965 or 1975 sir the response that it is very natural that any country will have to respond but the causation of the war which was the greed of china the greed and opportunism of pakistan sir these are things that i have uh, that i do not agree with at all but sir response is definitely warranted and a solid response and that as has been done by india in the past that is an interesting point of view uh you also like to read books on economics yes sir have you heard the term subscription economy sir no sir i have not heard that term. okay Have you heard the term surveillance capitalism? Yes, sir. What is it, sir? Surveillance capitalism primarily primarily refers to the capitalistic society that is being based by the harvesting of data by major companies in India, by in the world, sir. Be it Facebook, be it Google, through which through our actions online, they are surveying us in a way. and they are making money out of it as data is a new oil and sir this entire setup is called surveillance capitalism sir okay excellent thank you you have you heard the term narrative economics sir recently i am reading a book six phases of globalization in which i have read this term in which uh, the narrative justifying economic events and economic entities that occur it has taken preference over the facts and the and just the event in general sir that is why we have so many diverging views on economics and diverging narrative on economics sir okay so if i give you a hint one such example was election of donald trump so how can it be connected to the narrative economics how how the narrative defined his election any comment on that anything which comes to your mind yes sir sir there is a very uh, famous elephant curve that has been spoken a lot about which okay. shows how the middle class of developing countries and uh, sir the the upper cl- upper class of developed countries have benefited the most in the past 20 years this okay. is an economic fact the uh-huh. narrative that president donald j trump built on was that the developing countries like china like mexico and like india they are stealing the jobs away from middle class americans and the elites in america are not preventing it in fact they are exploiting it further which made the middle class of the us particularly the white suburban and rural areas sir they felt betrayed and that is why they saw an option in donald j trump who spoke about these issues and proposed solutions to them besides the fact that the narrative that he is a good uh, negotiator and a smart yes sir businessman Yes. and because he has succeeded at business he will also succeed as president 
Yes, sir. He famously Art touted Bandit. his yes, sir. He art of the deal book that he had written. He famously touted it a lot. Yes, sir. Okay. What is information asymmetry in economics, sir? Information asymmetry refers to the situation that generally occurs in transactions in which one party has more information that is relevant to the transaction than the other. It is mostly touted in cases of contract farming, for instance, in India. in which okay. it is said that in which it is said that multinationals have more information regarding the transaction than the gullible farmer so to speak uh, and thus they are at a disadvantage in general due to the information is made can you give one more example i give you a hint insurance sir i will not be able to answer this question selling of the car for instance now so seller has more information about his car than the buyer than the buyer yes sir and thus there is an asymmetry that exists what is the problem of the free loading or the free loaders in economy sir free loading the free loading problem is that once there is a good that people can free load upon nobody wants to pay for it and if the person who has paid for it there is an ex, there, there is a tendency to exclude the others who have not paid from it uh, per se so sir that is definitely clearly seen in cases of mostly public infrastructure which has high sunk costs and there is a option there is a chance of free loading present sir okay thank you excellent thank you sir good evening ma'am good evening uh, i said since you like reading books on democracy how would you define democracy ma'am i would go for the evergreen definition of democracy of government of the people by the people and for the people to which i would just like to add another understanding in which democracy is a system of the government in which we all have diverging opinions on superficial facts and other important facts but there is commonality in our understanding of basic principles that occur there are some basic values that we all respect and after that the ideologies and the systems of government that we vote for and that we prescribe to they change okay what are the four four pillars of democracy ma'am the four pillars of democracy would be the legislative the executive the judiciary and civil society and the media civil society and and the media and the media okay yes ma'am now uh, if we are a democratic country why is india slipping on the index of press freedom ma'am although there are some issues that do exist uh, in the civil liberties and the press freedom in india but that is that is the case because none no country ma'am is a perfect democracy there are some flaws even in our democracy the civil liberty the civil but we are a dismal 150 out of 180 yes ma'am due to the threats that sometimes exist to reporters and due to the fact that there have been instances of uh, rti activists being slaughtered who are generally linked to the media industry ma'am that has caused a problem and ma'am there is a narrative that uh, the pro media the pro government media is more encouraged in the country which most people more which i personally do not subscribe to but ma'am there is a narrative and that causes slipping in the rankings ma'am uh, but if you closely look at this index this is basically violence against journalists not the narrative yes, so these yes, are numbers these are hard numbers which are speaking okay yes, now uh, what is the difference between war and conflict ma'am wars occur when conflicts cannot be managed by diplomacy and conflicts are natural conflicts are something that will happen in differing opinions in differing yeah. interests but ma'am war is a conflict that cannot be managed and or which has been very poorly managed so ma'am that is, it is a very escalation of uh, conflicts ma'am difference of opinion escalates into when it is widespread it is intentional okay yes, now since you have already joined the police service what is your opinion on marital rape there is a split verdict on that yes ma'am Yes, so how do you feel if a complaint comes to you how will you handle it ma'am if a complaint comes regarding the provisions of uh, regarding a case of marital rape i would advise the complainant to look for avenues like the domestic violence act and similar acts that exists my personal opinion on marital rape ma'am as you asked ma'am i feel it should be criminalized although adequate safeguards should be there in case of anticipatory bail or for providing safeguards against its misuse 
but ma'am i feel as a modern society the time for criminalizing marital rape has indeed come in india although with okay. adequate safeguards yes ma'am okay now uh, why do you, do you think uh, padyatras have a specific role whether it is political whether it is religious or whether it is social and do padyatras fulfill their roles ma'am padyatras have a very important role be it in correcting with the public that that the political class and that the administration also it aims to serve the padyatra serve the purpose of getting the opinion of the masses on whom the policies are implemented and who see the first hand exposure to these ma'am padyatras are also important as i have recently seen in the case of visible policing in the case of route marches when there are sensitive situations that occur seeing a police just uh, patrolling on the road or taking a walk on the road it instills confidence okay, among the people yeah. so ma'am yeah. definitely it, it has a very important role ma'am okay my last question finland yes, has expressed a desire to be part of nato so has sweden what kind of complications do we foresee is it desirable at this stage ma'am although being a sovereign country finland as well as uh, sweden have a full right to apply for nato and nato has a full right to accept them but ma'am i'm not sure that as you mentioned we need another conflict in the midst of a war because ma'am uh, russia itself has already said that there will be significant significant technical and military implications implications of the same but ma'am russia is to blame for this aggression and the insecurity that has been harbored in the minds of its neighbors so although currently not very desirable but ma'am it is extremely understandable ma'am uh, also looking at the historical aspect of finland and yes sweden. ma'am the yeah. neutrality of sweden and the yya agreement signed by finland that was a solution earlier finlandization of ukraine ma'am but unfortunately the aggressions of russia have have forced these countries to look at these options ma'am options okay my last question yes, uh when is the national mathematics day ma'am the national mathematics day is celebrated on 22nd december on the birth of shrinivas ramanujan in india yeah thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you kumar subhashish uh, thank you sir thank uh, you ma'am thank you sir we will take you to the waiting room for a while and we'll call you back welcome back uh, kumar shivashish thank you sir now uh, you know the board has evaluated your performance but first we would like to know from you what is your assessment uh, sir i feel there are something in fact i was just noting down some things that i have to work on yes. uh, particularly some policing matters and uh, sir i feel it was average to above average but uh, i feel there is scope for improvement still sir okay and when is your interview sir it is on 26th may the last, last date. date the last date yes, okay so the general opinion is that you are very good but the problem is that there would be higher expectations from you because yes, you are already in the police service yes sir and compared to other candidates they will expect more from you yes sir so you have to fulfill that expectation yes sir then there would be a question that what you can do in ias which you cannot do in ips yes sir. so you have to be fully prepared for that Yes, sir. What kind of response you would like to give? Because this question is likely to come. Yes, sir. And they can also ask you that why haven't you opted for Indian Foreign Service? Yes, that sir. question can also be asked. Yes, so sir. on those two questions, you should prepare yourself. Now, so far as the, uh, the interview is concerned, I think I will suggest that you should also know the. nobel laureates in economics in india and yes, their writings yes sir yes sir and abhijit banerjee particularly yes, who sir. are the recent you know nobel laureates from india yes sir then uh, uh, there was little bit of uh, you know conflict in your view on one hand you said you are <coughs> anti war yes sir and then you justified certain wars so i yes, think sir. that reconciliation has to be done Okay, so war is not all the time for wrong reasons. For good reasons, also sometimes you have to have wars. Yes, sir. Responses to war are justified. Aggression, but aggression per se, yes, sir. I understand. Yeah, if there is a, for example, a massive repression of of the public, yes, and sir. for that you have to do war. For example, in Bangladesh, there is yes, tremendous repression of the uh, Bengali Muslims. 
by the Punjabis. That was the uh, beginning of the uh, you know conflict, and then finally resulted in the war. So this can happen in many places, yes, sir. and therefore war becomes necessary. Like the yes, Second sir. World War, it became necessary because of the, the German you know. Yes, so sir. war is not all the time. <laughs> in the yes, sir. Okay, sir. I'll try to tone it down. Yes, sir. Is, uh, this is what we need to say. Then uh, on the labor. Uh, Inspector and factory inspector, maybe you can get some clarification. Yes, sir. And also on FIR, which Tagurji asked you, uh, what sir. you know action needs to be taken. So that is within your jurisdiction right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then on the uh, films on war, since you have shown it in your, you know, def. Yes, sir. I think some of the films you should at least know. Okay, sir. And uh, Sanjay ji mentioned a few of the. Very prominent films on war, so yes, it would sir. be useful to know them. Okay, sir. Now, apart from that, I would not like to give you much suggestion because you are very experienced. Your, you know, clarity of expression is there. You think and then you answer. Your language is absolutely, you know, perfect. And uh, you have clarity on all the issues, on all the economic issues. You have answered very well. And the yes, questions sir. I asked you, uh, you have answered. Fairly well, but yes, it would be you. useful to know a little bit more about Interpol and yes. the red corner notice and extra yes, duties. A little bit more on that. Yes. Sir. Apart from that, uh, basically the constitutional provisions, the constitutional provisions concerning your, you know, department that is the police yes, department. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you should have a look at them, yes, and sir. the current economic situation of the country. Yes. Yes. Particularly with rising inflation and you know somewhat difficult position on the growth, yes, sir. and the growth projections have been downgraded somewhat little bit. So yes, on sir. those issues, you should have a look. Yes, and uh, uh, you know the current issues which you should monitor, because on the sports on football issue you could answer fairly well most of the questions. So the current issues you should continue to maintain and uh, continue to. You know, uh, follow up till the last date. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you have anything to ask, please let me know. Also about Jharkhand, you should. There could be some questions on Jharkhand. Yes, particularly sir. on the you know mineral mafia and how the Naxal are operating there. I think those questions can come up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll work on them, sir. Nothing much to ask, sir, because I feel the interview covered a lot of things, but. Out of all the mocks that I have given last year and this year, sir, I feel this mock covered every aspect of my DAF, and I'm really grateful to the honorable panel for this. Thank you. No, you will do very well. We wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. And we wish you success, and we hope you get IES this time. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. All the best. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Academy. Let's crack it.